Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian and this is Quest for Faith. And here on this channel, what, what I do is I break down the Catholic faith from a newcomer's perspective. Uh, so please, before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, hope you enjoy the content. And um, yeah, so today I'm going to be covering a topic that I've noticed is not on YouTube. Um... <laughs> I'm going to be talking about what it's like to go through the annulment process with the Catholic Church. So, let's buckle up, go through this, and get a little bit more personal than than normal. I don't know. Your faith is pretty personal, so I guess I'm always right there on the edge. But, uh, yeah, so we'll go through it. Let's get started. So... The annulment process with the Catholic Church is a bear. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not fun to go through. It's frustrating. Um, it can be a major stumbling block in joining the Catholic Church. But it is something that you have to go through if you have been divorced before you've joined the church. Or even if you're Catholic and you've been divorced and you want to get remarried... If you want it to be in the Catholic Church, you're going to have to go through this process. So what's it like? Uh, we didn't know. We just heard it could take forever. And, of course, in today's world, I started Googling and looking in YouTube. Hey, what what is it like to uh, go through the annulment? And what I found is a bunch of videos you can see here. Let me flip over. These are essentially just people talking about the theological reasons why you would go, why the Catholic Church does this. Um, it is not any personal accounts that I could find. And that was, we started looking through that in 2019 and there's still nothing out there. So that's, hence the video. Uh, so hopefully this will be helpful for those that are about to go through this and uh, to know what you're kind of getting into. So, uh, yeah, so the annulment process. So just starting off, the Catholic Church does not condone divorce. An annulment is totally different. It, it basically is states that the marriage was never a valid marriage. And you're thinking, how, what... How can you say that? Some people have been married for 20 years and have four or five kids, and the church still might grant them an annulment. Uh, it, it's a um, very detailed personal um, process that you have to go through. Um, but the whole point of it is really protecting the sanctity of marriage because the Catholic Church views marriage as a sacrament. It's not just a legal relationship. I mean, it is in the as far as the law is concerned, but you're making a pledge to not only your wife, but to God, wife or husband, spouse, to God, that you are going to be with this person for the rest of your life. And so that's that's the... Boiling it down in a nutshell, that's the reason. I know that the Catholic Church considers this a ministry and they look at this as a process of healing. I think I've heard one priest say on some YouTube video we watched, it didn't feel like that. Uh, so let's, let's kind of go through the process. So we started RCIA in the fall of 2019, in September. And when you're filling out paperwork, our parish did an interview with each person that wanted to go through RCIA to kind of get an idea of where they're at with their faith. Uh, and just, it, it was a simple, pleasant discussion, essentially. But there was some paperwork we had to fill out. And one of the questions was, have you ever been married before? Have you been divorced? And my wife had to say, yes, she had been married before we were married. And when 
we were trying to get the process started as soon as we could. And after she talked with our priest, uh, he decided to try and ask the Dallas diocese if she could, I don't know exactly what the term is, but a uh, lack of a better word, because I don't know what the term is. Uh, I guess there's sometimes they, there's a shortcut type process. Uh, where you don't have to go through the full process. I it, To me, it sounds like that rarely ever, ever gets granted, but it's worth a shot if you can do it. So the the priest asked the diocese, it, based off my wife's situation, if that would be granted, and they said no. So by the time they got back to, uh, to Father Andrew, we... We're already three, four months into our CIA. I think it was November or December. And she had to start the process and start filling out this just stack of papers. And in these papers, it's very personal. It's I, I didn't have to fill it out, so I don't know it all. But I just remember her complaining about it. Uh, they're going to ask about your sex life when you were married they're gonna ask about your intent when you were to getting married the whole situation they want every detail in your point of view and it's extremely painful to go through so you fill that information out and then you send that in uh, they also are going to want witnesses and essentially these are people that were around during that that period of time that can uh, give their perspective on what happened and what they saw. Uh, and they're also going to want your parents to fill out information, the same type of, of information. Uh, in total, I think we had about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we had eight people that got involved in this situation for my wife um, because I, her parents doubled as I think typically they want your parents and then four or five people, other people that knew you during this period of time. And my wife's situation was so bad. It, it quite honestly could be a lifetime movie uh, <laughs> full of, full of uh, deceit uh, danger, intrigue, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it really could be a lifetime movie. Uh, so she had cut ties with everybody except her friends before, before this marriage. So she had no contact with anybody else, uh, that, that was, that she had made friends with while she was with her ex. Uh, so you're going to have to find that many people. Now the, some of them are going to be character witnesses and those th that app that's a one pager it's really simple to fill out uh it's not hard to fill out at all and they can get that done in a few minutes and send it in uh, they'll, they'll mail it back in so the diocese will mail out this paperwork to everybody that that you put down as as your witnesses the this is where we you would hope because it's family and friends that are filling this out that they would be prompt and because you know faith is important and you would hope that would happen but that wasn't our case um most of them took forever to do this uh and it was really kind of embarrassing for my wife because after two months of all the paperwork being sent out she would email the, di the her contact at the diocese so you get assigned i forgot about that you get assigned a uh, an attorney and a caseworker uh you have contact with a caseworker not the attorney at least that's how the dallas diocese did it and so she would email the caseworker and then the caseworker would take four or five days to get back to her and tell her kind of what the status is and it was really embarrassing for about three four months there of yeah, we still don't have everything in. And so then my wife was having to call all of her witnesses and go, hey, they told me you haven't mailed it in. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I'll, I'll get on that. I'll do it this weekend. And this went on for a while. So if 
for us, this added probably four or five months in this entire process. Um, and this could have shortened it big time. So once you go through that and, and all the paperwork is submitted, they're not going to move forward until all the witnesses have submitted their documents. Then the, the attorney will kind of come up with, there's 14, I, I think 14 different reasons they'll grant an annulment and he'll select what he thinks are, yeah, it, what he thinks is the best uh, case for your annulment to go through. And then he'll start the process and start submitting it. And this takes a very long time. Um, the other thing you're going to have to do is a psyche valve. And this isn't like a test suit. I think, I don't remember if she had to fill out. I think she did have to do a, quite, a psyche valve before her interview with a psychologist. Uh, the part that perturbed me is we had to pay for it. Uh, and if you watch any of those videos that I showed at the beginning of this, you'll see that the most dioceses lose money. They, they don't, this is a cost for them to even just for this whole process. Um, so we had to pay for it, but we did put it on our health savings account card. So that is an option because this is a medical deal and, uh, our card approved it. So no, no big deal there. I didn't have to take it out of my checking account or anything, but, um, just FYI. Um, and so once all that stuff gets through, then it's kind of crunch time. And I think that finally everything, so we started the process really in, I think, December 2019. Uh, everybody finally got their paperwork in in June or July 2020. That was the other thing that drove me nuts. It was 2020. We we're all stuck at home. Sorry. If any of my wife's family is watching this, sorry. Um... I'm not really holding a grudge, but still. Uh, <laughs> so that all that went through. We're we're in the middle of 2020, and then I think she had to do her evalve in September. So we're talking a year later since we started our CIA, and her annulment finally went through in. Uh, let's see, I think in. April 2021 and this the the thing about ours or this process is they typically they want both sides of the story so we had to figure out her situation was bad enough and she cut ties and and basically tried to completely fall off the radar from this guy and so we had to pay money on a website to kind of hunt him down and figure out where he was at, give the the information to the diocese. And they reached out to him uh, through mail with the packet and to give him an opportunity to, uh, to tell his side of the story. And he never responded. So the diocese gave him, I think 30 days is what the attorney gave him to respond after the packet was sent or they knew it got there. And so they gave him 30 days from that point uh, to reply and he never did so they went on with the process and then at the end when it was granted uh they gave i think they again mailed out a letter saying hey the process is complete we're granting the annulment you have 30 days to respond if you want to object and he didn't respond thank god and we actually get confirmed uh this weekend so it's it's been a, a very long time and it's a big stumbling block. Uh, there were several times that my wife was so frustrated with this process that she was like, I don't even want to join the Catholic Church. And I kept saying, I'm joining, so I need, we're doing this. Um, I need you to go through this process. And it wasn't necessarily, I, believe me, I was there comforting her the whole time. I was just as frustrated as she was. Um, there, the, this is not an easy process. And I couldn't even imagine if he would have responded and we had to get both sides of the story, wait for his witnesses to come forward. 
and how long they would give him. It, it, it would take forever. No wonder people say it could take two to three years to go through. Um, and so I, my advice for anybody that is, A, joining the church, be prepared. This is what um, I would I would almost start those conversations if you have a relationship with your ex still because of kids or whatever the reason. Uh, tell them, hey, I'm joining the Catholic Church. We're going to have to go through this annulment process. I, I'd really appreciate it if you'd help start those conversations really early when you start RCIA. And secondly, if you're Catholic and you just got a divorce, start the process now before you're even thinking about getting married again. Because uh, it'd be hell on earth if five years down the road you meet someone else and you guys want to get married in the church and you have to wait for this process. And what if it took two or three years to get through? So start it now to get it out of the way. That That's my personal opinion on that. Uh, but that that's kind of the experience. Was it? Uh, I know they. I, I remember watching a priest talk about this on YouTube, saying that it's a. If they want it to be a healing process, um, to people kind of reconcile where things went wrong, and and it definitely didn't feel like that for my wife. It was kind of dredging up old memories that she had really dealt with. Um, and it was really difficult because we're talking, it was 20 years ago when all this went down. And so trying to remember the detailed information, how you felt, what happened, was really difficult in her case. So, um, yeah, so that, that that's what it's like going through the annulment process. Um, but at the end of the day, is it worth it? It's 100% worth it. Uh, it it's, it's the one true faith. And just keep that in mind that the reason you're going through this, um, it's not easy, but it's worth it in the end. So I am absolutely excited and ecstatic that I actually get to take partake in the Eucharist this Sunday. Uh, it, it's going to be a joyous occasion, and we're even going to have a little celebratory uh, steak dinner after or lunch after after mass on sunday so i am super excited um and just if you're going through it pray 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 keep keep focused on on why you're doing doing this and uh try not to let the the process the slow gears that are turning uh balk you down too much so that is the process i hope uh i hope this was uh, informative Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.